What's up guys, it's your boy Ty Skits here and in today's car trip racing online video I'm gonna be showing you guys how to lead in a tandem and how to chase in a tandem With that being said, I'll be showing you the do's and don'ts and the ins of outs the ins and outs, I mean, of tandeming in car extra first in the line. If you guys find this video helpful in any way, please consider dropping a like, sharing the video, subscribing, and turning on post notifications, as it's really helpful toward my channel and the analytics when it comes to the algorithm. Plus, we're on our way to 100k subscribers, and I really, really want to get that plaque. But with that being said, I'd say the easiest way to learn how to tandem is to go to Tandem Drift and practice tandeming. So in today's examples of how to and how not to lead and chase and how to and how uh, or at, you get what I'm saying, how to chase and how to lead, we're going to be doing the tandem drift um, section here. So I think the map that I'm going to be going with is West Coast Arena. And I've shown these methods on stream a few times, but I've never made a video on it. I know I've made like a lot of lengthy like videos on how to tan them, but I felt like they weren't really like too helpful. So I figured I'd make a new one. All right, so for the first example, I'm gonna be showing you guys what not to do when it comes to leading and chasing and then what to do. But I think I'm just gonna do it in two sections. So like I'm gonna do the leading part. So I'm gonna do a bad lead, then a good lead. And then I'm gonna do a bad chase and then a good chase. So we're going to be using the burner JDM, AKA the Toyota chaser where you're on West coast arena. Let's get it. This is going to be what a bad lead would look like for tandems. And I'm going to explain why it's a bad lead when I do the chase, but for one, you never want to be this inside on any corners because if you're this inside on corners, it literally makes it impossible for the chase to even get on your door because of how inside your lines are. And this is, this just, I don't know, this like leading like this puts the chasers like in a really bad position because see in that line, I took the inside line, but that's where the chaser is supposed to be. They're not supposed to be that inside, but the chase is supposed to take the inside line to keep up with the lead. So watch what happens that's definitely not what you want. So I'm going to show you guys what a good lead will look like now. So this is what a good lead will look like. So a good lead will take wide lines and hold smooth. Uh, a good lead will take wide lines, hold a good angle, be smooth with transitions, not be super shaky, not take every corner inside and just basically execute the track in a more uh, you know drift way and not a racing way because I feel like if you're taking inside lines You're either doing one of two things I mean you're either new to the game or you're just trying to prove to everybody that you're fast or maybe you just I Don't know maybe maybe you think that that's what you're supposed to be doing But that's why I'm making this video though just to show y'all what to and what not to do So this is what a good lead looks like compare the last chase that I did to this chase when you lead like this, it makes the chase way easier for the people that are chasing you to actually keep up, not have to worry about crashing into anything or going off the track to keep up. And it'll look way better when people are spectating you and for like gameplay recording purposes also. This looks way better. Didn't have to go off the track. Don't have to go super inside. Don't have to make a lot of adjustments. I can just kind of like sit there and ride, you know, my RPM and keep up. Now, with that being said, I'm going to do one more lead and then I'm going to show you guys what a bad chase will look like. And then I'm going to do one more. Uh, hold on, wait. I'm going to do one more lead and show you what a bad chase is. And then I'll do another lead and show you what a good chase is. But let me go ahead and go back in here accidentally accidentally restarted it i did not mean to restart it actually i could have just restarted it and like showed the bad and good chase but it's it's okay it's okay all right so let me do one more leader and then i'll show you guys hold on all right so here we go i'm gonna do a really good lead for like somebody that's chasing and then i'm just gonna do like the worst chase that i can like a chase that you'd see like in a public lobby or something like that you know what i'm saying and then i'll show you guys like what you should be doing
and the reason that I'm pointing out <clears throat> what's a good lead and what's a bad lead is because maybe depending on what lobby you're in or who you're drifting with maybe you're not bad at tanning maybe the person that you're trying to chase is just bad at leading so keep that in mind and if you have a friend or somebody that's bad at leading or bad at chasing uh suggest they watch this video so this is what a bad chase will look like so a bad chase is me just full throttling it trying to like hold the same angle and if you're just full throttling it and trying to hold the same angle no matter what you do you will not keep up like you would think you would think that full throttling it and holding the same angle would make you keep up with the chase or with the lead it's like why am i not keeping up i'm literally full throttle i'm holding the same angle why can't i keep up well i'm gonna explain why for one as the chase you never want to take a wide line while chasing you want to take a little bit more of a shallow line to be able to keep up with the lead okay if you're taking if you're taking a very like outside line you will not keep up because of the fact that <clears throat> you're not like pulling your car in far enough to stay on the leads like door or even in proximity like you know what i'm saying so this is what you want to do to fix that problem like look at the gap between the two cars when i'm full throttling as a chase that is the size of the gap that there is so i'm gonna show you guys what happens when you don't full throttle and you give it a little bit less gas and you also take a little bit more of an inside line so here we go all right so i'm not gonna full, i'm gonna try my best not to full throttle a lot and i'm also gonna take more of an inside line instantly the gap is closed instantly and a lot of you may say oh well it's because you you took off uh, a lot slower in the last one or you didn't go as fast in the last one but if you guys don't believe me like i'll show you one more time okay i'm literally not full throttling it i'm just riding 5k rpms and taking the inside line and i'm keeping up okay it's not that difficult you don't have to try hard or try to overcompensate for speed just to keep up i'm gonna show you guys one more time i'm gonna take off the exact same way except this time i'm gonna full throttle it and hold the same line as the lead and let's see if i keep up so i'm holding the same line as the lead and i'm full throttling it and i'm not keeping up i'm holding the same wide line now let's see what happens when i let off the gas a little bit and i move inside once I let off the gas and I move to the inside line a little bit, I instantly, instantly catch up. Just aiming your car more inside. Even if I get behind a little bit, I can still catch up just by taking the inside line and not full throttling it. And you guys are probably wondering, well, how does that make sense? Wouldn't you think that, you know, full throttling would make you, you know, drift a lot faster or catch up? Well, if you understand physics when it comes to like a drift car, when you are full throttling the car you are creating more wheel spin which creates a lot less friction between your tires and the ground which is going to make it a lot more slipper slipperier or slip it's going to make it a lot less grip it's going to give it a lot less grip basically it's going to be way slipperier than it would be if you were giving it less throttle now that's basically how drifting works though because if there was no wheel spin the car wouldn't be able to drift but too much wheel spin is a bad thing and too little is also a bad thing so you got to find that perfect medium because when you let off the gas as the chase and you uh take a little bit more of an inside line for one taking the inside line will help you keep up um, if you're full throttling, it's going to be really, really hard to take an inside line because if you have more wheel spin, it's going to put you a lot wider on the track when you're drifting. So basically taking the inside line and letting off the gas combined, letting off the gas will give you more friction with your tires on the track because of the fact that you don't have as much wheel spin. So your tires are able to get a lot more traction and thus give you more grip to help you keep up when you're tandeming so uh with that being said i'm gonna show you guys a little bit more in depth for this video because i feel like that's not enough 
I feel like I need to show you guys a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a track like East Toge. This is a really popular track in car extra racing online. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lead run and I'm going to record the ghost for the lead run. And then I'm going to do a good chase and a bad chase. Um, and I'll also do a good lead and a bad lead. So I think I'm going to do the bad lead and the good lead first. So this is going to be a good lead or no, this is going to be a bad lead on east toge this is what you don't want to do as a lead on east toge so i'm going to go ahead and press record and i'm going to do the worst lead that i can do or not even just the worst lead just a bad lead this is a bad lead just to go a little bit more in depth see i go outside on the on the beginning of the corner and then i shoot straight to the inside and then i go inside again and I'm just all over the place. I'm going inside and I feel like in these people heads, they either don't know like what, dr how to drift properly, like on a track or they think they're fast or I don't know. They're just trying to like prove something. I don't, I don't, I don't get what the point is, but this is not how you want to lead. This is literally a terrible lead. Taking all inside lines. The trajectory of your car around the track is way, way off. This is literally, literally unchaseable. Like if your drifting looks anything like this, you need to practice holding wide lines and staying more consistent. Like when it comes to your throttle and stuff like that, because this is literally an unchaseable lead. Like literally, I wouldn't be surprised if the people chasing you crash the cars into the wall because of how terrible these lines are okay so um <clears throat> this is honestly like really really cringe to do i'm kind of cringing right now i don't even want to finish this run that's how bad it is but you see this online in car x lobbies on a daily basis which is the sad thing but then again that's why i'm here to try to help you guys and clean things up a little bit so that you know people can have a better experience when they get into an online lobby or just drift with other people in general on this game. So like I said, that's going to be a bad lead. Now I'm going to chase the bad lead and show you why it's a bad uh, lead for a chase also. I want to go ahead and stop that recording. Select the replay. I'm going to go ahead and start the replay. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to do the best chase I can. This is what it's going to look like for anybody chasing a line that looks like that. And the reason this is not good is because for one, just like on West Coast Arena, with the lead taking these inside lines, you're constantly going off the track, which is a risk of losing grip or losing control of the car. Um, you could also hit something on the track, like a barrier or rail, like right here. It could be really risky because the lead goes super inside and I could hit that right there, which is really, really sketchy. You have to make a ton of corrections. If you see somebody leading like this in car extra racing, do not chase them. Do not chase them for practice. Don't do it. Do not chase them for practice. This is and don't lead like this in a tandem either. Like, just don't do it. It's it's terrible. You guys get the point, though. We don't need to see any more of these cringe lines. I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the good lead. And uh, let's go from there. So this is going to be a good lead. I need to get out of fly mode. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this really quick. We're going to go to record. And this is going to be the good lead. So this is what a good lead will look like. So if you guys are trying to get better at leading and chasing, make sure you guys are taking a lot of notes. So a good lead is going to trend, it's going to take the corners wide and give any of the chasers behind him or her enough space to be able to transition and have room to make the corrections they need to make and to be able to stay on the inside line. It's very important that the leads stay outside so that the chasers can keep up and stay on the inside line because if the lead, like I said, and like you guys saw, is taking inside lines, if the lead's taking inside lines, it's not gonna be a good day for the chasers and nobody's gonna wanna tandem with you. So it's very important that you transition wide into corners 
when you're linking corners and that you try your best to have good throttle control around the corners so that you can hold them wide and have good angle and give all your chasers enough room to be able to follow your uh, lead. So with that being said, I think I'm gonna wrap it up like right around here and just do the chase. I don't feel like we need to do the whole track. I just feel like giving you guys a different setting and a atmosphere would kind of help you guys understand it a little bit better because it's kind of looking at it from like a different perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording. And then, like I said, go ahead and play the good lead run and do the chase. But first for the good lead, we're gonna do a bad chase. And then after the good lead, we'll do a good chase. So let's go ahead and open the replay. <clears throat> Uh, hold on, wait. Okay, I have to unload that. Okay, that's how it works. I was like, wait, what's going on? Okay, that's not the right one. It's going to be this one right here. Okay, so this is going to be a bad chase. This is going to be a bad chase. So a bad chase, once again, just like West Coast Arena, I'm going to be trying to take the same line as the lead and just full throttling it, trying my best to keep up. And literally, like, no matter what, I can literally go up as high as a gear as I want without going off the track, and I still will not keep up. And I feel like a lot of people experience this, and they're probably wondering, like, you know, why is my car not fast enough? My car is not fast enough. I can't keep up with anybody. You know, it's just like, it's, it's not working for me. I suck at this game. Well, the thing is, is you don't suck. You just need a better technique and some guidance and a little bit of strategy and uh, some understanding, learn and learn some understanding of like, you know, how cars work and how tandems work and things of that nature. So that being said, I think we've seen enough of this cringe chase. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what a good chase will look like. Okay, so this is what a good chase will look like. I'm gonna take a little bit more of an inside line, let off the gas a little bit and control my throttle. So instantly I'm not gonna floor it. I'm just gonna let off the gas a little, take a little bit more of an inside line. Another thing you wanna do when you're chasing, I didn't mention this, is when you transition, as soon as you see your lead start to transition, every time that they transition, there's an open pocket you just want to get right in that pocket and it'll let you up on their door every single time. You don't want to transition early because look what happens when you transition early as a chase. That's another thing I wanted to mention too. Like a lot of people will transition early. It can actually mess up the lead sometimes when you do that. Like for example, right here, if I transition early, I could potentially uh, line my front bumper up with the lead's rear bumper and stop him from completing his transition. So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like right here. So like if you're chasing transition early, boom, right there, I would lock up with the lead. Now, this is a ghost lead, so I can't hit him. But if I transition early, I could potentially throw off my trajectory or end up messing up the lead, uh, the lead run. Like, for example, right here, if I transition too early, let me see, I can't really do it right here. But if I transition too early, like right here, for example, like, look at that like it can it can potentially throw you off i just don't suggest you do it like what's best in my opinion i'm gonna show you guys one more time but in my opinion what's best is that you just hold on uh what's best is you just wait until they're like i'd say like a quarter to like midway through their transition and you just want to like then you want to transition and you want to make sure that you're transitioning at the same speed as them because if you transition too slow it'll be like this and you'll get left which you don't want that so and then if you transition too fast you can potentially end up doing that and going too far inside so you just want to make sure that you kind of match their energy their speed how fast they transition and that should help you keep up with them basically you're just mimicking their line but at a slower speed and at a more 
or with a more inside line or you're just going to be more inside on the line but you're basically literally mimicking you're supposed to mimic the person in front of you just at a little bit of a lower speed taking an inside line it's literally that simple i hope you guys enjoyed this video this has been your boy ty skids playing cards traversing online today i showed you guys some in-depth tips and tricks for how to tandem and car extra racing online if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to drop a like subscribe turn on post notifications share the video and with that being said i will catch you guys in the next one peace